Got an absolutely massive game in the ACC. You got Florida State going to Clemson, South Carolina. If you were to look at the schedule, this seems to be the final hurdle, quote unquote, for Florida State as they make a charge towards the ACC title, the college football playoff. All that's to say, let's break it down here with War Chant's very own Ira Chauffel. Ira, how are we feeling, man? Big week. We we're talking before we got on air. A, a lot to unpack with this one. How are, uh, how are the vibes in, in Tallahassee? Yeah, I think, you know, coming off that BC game, uh, they were obviously Florida State's very uh, got a lot to be focused on internally, which is good. That's where they need to be. Uh, this is a team with tons of experience, tons of talent. When they play their best, they can play with anybody. We saw that against LSU. But if they don't play their best and they kind of sleepwalk a little bit like they did in the second half against BC, they could be in some trouble. So I think that might have been having that too close for comfort uh, close against Boston College might end up helping them refocus as they go into this big game against Clemson. Well, I was going to say in that game, is this the thing where you're like, uh oh, some things that we got to correct here, some things we got, you know, you hate to use the word exposed in week three, but some things that, that we want to fix going into this Clemson game, or is it, hey, it was a horrible look ahead spot, sleepy noon kick, you're on the road, it's Boston College, like which, which do you fall more in the camp of there? I think it's more a, a attention to detail. They let things slip. Once they got ahead 31 to 10, they had gone on a 28 nothing run. The defense had gotten five straight stops, including a turnover. Uh, the offense had scored on five of, of six possessions. They were in complete control of the game. And I think they just took their foot off the gas and stopped paying attention. And, and all of a sudden, here comes BC charging, and then they couldn't regroup. Um, it wasn't like the mistakes they made in the second half were – uh, things that got exposed or they didn't know about. It was just attention to detail, fundamental things like protecting the football, uh, jumping on loose balls, things like that. I think those things, the heightened awareness of a big game will bring those things back. What's the matchup you're watching in this game for Florida State? I think it's all about uh, Clemson's running game and Florida State's run defense. Uh, you know, you, you got a, a young quarterback in Cade Klubnick. They're obviously not going to want to drop him back a ton against Florida State's defense. Um, I think you're, they're going to try to establish their running game. They're so good at it. They've got two great backs with Shipley and Mafa, and uh, they're going to try to pound the ball. And Florida State's run defense has been good this year against the traditional run. They stopped LSU's running backs effectively. They stopped BC's running backs effectively. Where they've gotten into trouble is with mobile quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels and uh, uh, Castellanos for BC both had success running the football but running backs haven't had had big days yet. If Florida State can handle Clemson's running game, I think they'll, they'll feel really good about their chances. And how do you feel about the health of Jordan Travis? We're recording this on a Monday morning, and I'm sure there's still more details that are going to come out during the week. But as it stands right now, your overall feel on his, uh, his health when it comes to this game on Saturday? My guess is there's not going to be a whole lot of details coming out. Mike Norvell is very <laughs> secretive when it comes to injuries in general but certainly with his, his star quarterback. So I don't think we're going to hear a whole lot this week. Uh, I think it'll just be presented as business as usual. But yeah, Jordan seemed to get, he got banged up at the end of the first half at, at Boston College. Looked like he was favoring his shoulder, his left arm, his non-throwing arm. Came back and threw the ball well in the second half. He was six for six in the third quarter for 90-something yards and a touchdown. Um, but he didn't want to, he looked like he wasn't willing to run the football. And that's going to be a big question this game. You know, Florida State, with Jordan Travis, when they've moved the ball against Clemson these last few years, when Clemson's had great defenses, it's usually been when Jordan is a threat as a runner. If he's not a threat as a runner, that changes things dramatically. So, so we'll have to see how that plays out. I, I have no doubt Jordan Travis is going to play in this football game. He finished the BC game. The question is, will he be willing to run the football? And, uh, and, and that could have a huge impact on things. I know a lot of Florida State fans were watching that one. And when he went out of the game, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is – this is not happening week before Clemson. It's Boston College. And so thankful that he'll be able to obviously be ready for this game and was able to return in that game. Ira, I want to get your thoughts on this. When Clemson lost to Duke, I think all of us looked ahead to this spot and we're like, all right, well, Florida State's going to roll now. It was kind of like the, the perceived notion after seeing what Florida State did the day before to LSU. Does Clemson with one loss going into this game make them a, a touch more dangerous because of how they're perceived in your mind? I don't, I don't know if it affects anything from Florida State's perspective because they've lost to Clemson seven straight times. So no matter how bad, Clemson could have looked bad in all three of these games. They could be 0-3, and I think Florida State would still feel, man, this is Clemson. 
this is Death Valley. We've got to be at our best. So I think they're going to get Florida State's best effort. And I think, you know, from Clemson's standpoint, after that loss to Duke, they've had two games to kind of figure things out. Uh, they, you know, the FAU game, the Charleston Southern games, both were lopsided affairs, and they, they kind of figured out who they are. Cade Klubnick now, I think he's seven touchdowns and one interception in these last two games, so he's kind of settled down. Uh, but this is now this is a big step back up in competition for them as well. I think Florida State might feel like they're a little bit more battle-tested because that LSU game, LSU has looked great since that game. So we'll see how it plays out. But I, but I, I don't think there's any any circumstances where Florida State would, would either think this is going to be anything other than maybe their best uh, competition of the season. I cannot wait for this one. This is one we've had circled for a minute here. I know this is one that you've had circled for a minute. I know Florida State's had this one circled for a minute. So the fact that it's finally gang week for Clemson, Florida State, absolutely fired up. Ira, thanks so much for your time. Y'all, if you, if you want to keep in the know at all with anything college football, especially Florida State-centric, make sure you're dialed in at War Chant. Ira and the team, they're keeping you in the know for all things Florida State. Ira, enjoy game week. Thanks for your time. We'll do this again real soon. Thanks, J.D. Appreciate you. Florida State fans, if you liked that video, go get you a membership over at War Chant. They're going to keep you in the know for all things regarding your Knowles. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.